In this video, you'll see exactly what you need to do um, to design a PowerPoint, a Prezi, or whichever other IT software you're using to do your presentation. It may be that you've got a specific conference in mind. That's fine. Check out their guidelines and see what they require. Uh, but you remember that you will need to adapt those to fit into our 15 minute time slot. So you may be aiming to go to a conference that's asking you to get a 40 minute presentation ready um, or something on those lines. So just adapt that down so that you can fit it in for the 15 minutes that we require. And in that way, you may be doing this as a sort of trial run or a dry run ready for the actual conference that you're aiming for. Especially if you're new to presenting or maybe a little bit nervous about this, the temp temptation is to actually read it. And that's something that you want to try your best to avoid. Some people read uh, too much of the text that's on their screen in front of them, and the audience can usually read this quicker than you're reading it out anyway. So that's referred to as death by PowerPoint. Avoid doing that. A similar problem would be if you're reading from a text. It's okay to do that, and many people at conferences do, but you don't want it to sound as if you're reading from a text. So if you are reading something from paper in front of you, I would suggest using a um, really large font so that you can hold the paper at the distance and maybe just pick out key words and talk to those, rather than reading as if you've got an article stuck in front of your eyes. And when you're doing presentations, here's your time to shine. So develop an on-stage persona. Be comfortable in your own skin and learn ways that you can present out to people. So you really are um, performing your presentation. And that does take time. It does take lots of practice. But the more you practice at it, the more comfortable you will be and the easier you will be at doing this. And a really good practical tip is always check out the IT facilities. So whether you're doing your presentation online, maybe using Microsoft Teams or Zoom, um, or you're going to a conference, and maybe you're going to be using a video clip within your presentation, always check out with the organizers whether they've got the facilities to do all of the things you want to do. You don't want to get caught out at the last minute. And once you've taken on board all of that background stuff, this is what you need to do. So you may be following specific guidelines of a particular conference. That's fine. Just tell us at the beginning of your session that you're doing this according to the guidelines of such and such a conference. Otherwise, here's a typical format that you can just build on for most presentations. Think what your audience will see when they walk into a room and maybe yours is the first presentation up. So you want a welcoming slide, an opening slide that's got your title of the session, um, your name, maybe your qualifications, your job title, and say that you're um, a postgraduate student. Also put on some contact details as well. If you're using Twitter or a specific hashtag, make sure you get those in as well. And when you're counting on how many slides you need, or if it's in Prezi, how many little stops that you need across your canvas, these would be the typical um, headings that you will need to address. So introduce your topic. What is it that you're talking about in relation to the title you've just used on your main opening page? And then maybe give us a bit of a background to how we've got to where we are today with this topic. It's also good to give a rationale, your reasons why, why this is important or why you want to do it. So you may be doing this just as some bullet points. And again, rather than reading things out slavishly from the screen, have them down as bullet points. But in your head, you know more that you want to say to each bullet point. So we can watch them appear. Maybe if you've got them on animations, make them appear. And then you just talk over all of this. The assessment guidelines also say that you need to consider epistemology, ontology and ethics. So look back at the nature of knowledge session that we did to explore those terms again, but feel free to chat to us all in our classroom sessions together or online in the forum. If you're stuck with any of these words, you're not sure what they mean, let's get this out there and talk about this um, so that you can address each of these terms. 
The next slide or slides that, that traditionally would follow this would be your overview or your review of the literature. After that, you can have a wider discussion, um, looking at what the literature is saying in relation, for example, to what you've experienced in practice. So it's a wider discussion. And then you can draw out of that your various implications for practice or implications for practice development. When it comes to the literature review section, you may have this in more than one slide. So one of them, for example, may just give, an, give us an overview, maybe in a diagrammatic form, just as you see here, or a spider diagram um, or mind map, just showing us the different types of literature that you've actually looked at in preparation for this assignment. And then on another slide, show us the key themes coming out of those papers. It's good then to summarise what you've just gone over in this presentation. So you told us what you're going to do, you've, you've actually done it, and then you've summarised what you've done. That's the key summary that you give us. And then conclude it all, and then you show us your reference pages. And normally when the references are up, that's when people will say thank you, over to you, time for questions. And remember that old saying about how a picture speaks a thousand words. So throughout your presentation, if it's the type of conference that you can use images in, feel free then to use images so that you can keep your text more to a minimum and even the images can speak to your audience or then you know what those images are triggering you to say more about. So we don't need loads and loads of text all the time. Think of other ways of getting your message across.